talking of what these off-the-cuff comments coming from Trump can mean, the fact that foreign agencies can already be perhaps discerning something about his character, I mean, is this a worry at all from a security point of view? I think from a security point of view, anytime data leaves a secure environment, in today's world, people are looking at it. There's no doubt that countries and organizations around the world are looking at our new president-elect as he moves into the White House. But I think as he starts steering towards the Oval Office, there'll be a lot of global intelligence firms and also the government helping him steering to a much more secure manner in communicating. So therefore, when we're looking, Rod, potentially at international diplomacy that is in some way been taken on board by Donald Trump. I mean, look at some of the tweets that we've seen coming from him just over the weekend, claiming China stole a U.S. drone this weekend, announcing, of course, that he spoke directly with the Taiwanese president of late. There we have the tweet up on screen showing what he can let go of. You think, do you agree that this could be reined back once he actually comes into office? Uh, if you look at his numbers, he's already reined it back. He, he averaged 30 or 35 tweets a day back in October. And in December, he's back to about five a day. And, and, and they're generally a little more benign as he's shifted from campaigner and marketer to preparing to govern. Um, you, you obviously gave a couple of exceptions this weekend where he probably uh, threw the Chinese off guard with a couple of different tweets. Bob, bring it to you. And the hackers, of course, that have potentially been widely concerned about the DNC. Could we see hacking getting into the likes of Donald Trump's very own personal phones, his Twitter accounts? Is that sort of a threat possible? Yeah, I mean, I think you always have to look at it as a threat, but I will tell you, uh, when it comes to national security and national security assets, especially around the President of the United States, there's a lot of organizations making sure that that information and the way that the President communicates stays safe. But I do think it's one thing that we all need to be on guard about nowadays. I think whether it's the President of the United States or people in the C-suites of private enterprise, secure communications is something that we constantly talk to clients about. So I want to bring the conversation to Rod now and give us the sense of what happens to the media within all of this. So far, the middleman seems to have not been needed. He's been going straight to the consumer. Will that become more necessary once again? Will he have to start? chatting with the media in the same rather than boycotting them well he, he tweeted back uh, early December that you know why does he tweet so much and it's uh, because he really wants the American people to hear him and not hear it through the the lens of the media you know FDR went to the radio directly Reagan went to TV directly I, I think this is a, a very savvy uh, uh, president-elect who will take advantage of social media and go directly to the American people he obviously needs to be um, security conscious uh, and, uh, but but I, I don't think he, he'll abandon his ability to talk directly to the American people. Rod, staying with you, what therefore does this mean potentially for evidence that maybe we get misinformation at times? We saw a tweet coming from Donald Trump himself potentially saying that the popular vote went to Hillary Clinton because of millions of those that voted illegally. Perhaps that not all completely truthful. What, what do you feel therefore is, is at risk here? Is transparency a positive and the risk being perhaps some misinformation at times? Well, I, I think the, mis the question is, is the misinformation on purpose? Is, is there some strategic reason for it? Or uh, was he just taking the story and, and running a different direction? He's, he's uh, quite adept at changing the subject. Um, he, he, he will take whatever story is running when the Steve Bannon issue uh, was happening. He, he pivoted and, and, and tweeted about flag burning. Um, and really uh, had the entire media pivot with him. He's, he's sort of got a unique ability to pivot the story. And um, I, I, I think finding a way to do that when he's governing will be difficult. There are not very many minutes in the day he's going to get a chance to tweet. So what will be interesting is what will President Trump do and what will he have time to do? Bob, from your point of view, have there been any positive reactions and things that have swirled around the fact that maybe Donald Trump as president-elect can go direct to the voter but then direct to those he is in diplomacy with. Is there any upside to the president having such a direct point to point with those mm -hmm. in the communities? Yeah, I think it's a first. I think we're all witnessing something here that really hasn't been done before. And I think until he settles into the presidency, and I agree, Rod, to see how long he actually keeps this up or maybe settles into more a traditional role as a presidency, there's no doubt that he's used social media 
uh, to his side and what he wants to communicate, kind of cutting out the middleman, if you will, telling a story.